Hey guys, Dan here, and here we go again, but this time PowerSmart came out with something to compete directly against the Time Master. Yep, I said it. This is to compete directly against the Toro Time Master, the 30-inch Toro Time Master with the big gas-guzzling engine. I'll tell you what, what they did here, twin blades, 26-inch, it's about the same style deck but four inches less you got two inches less blade on each side world of difference the problem i had with the toro time master was that the deck was just too small for 30 inches of cut so the blades couldn't process the clippings it was great when it was early in the year but as soon as i started getting into that every two weeks sent uh, centipede and saint augustine grass I tell you that Time Master was just pure garbage and I, I couldn't sell it fast enough and it was like 13 or 1100, 1200 bucks or something like that plus tax. It was like almost $1,300. This year, at the time of filming, this mower is $750 and does not require a drop of fuel or an ounce of oil. It's an 80 volt system. Let me show you the battery real quick. It's a beast, okay? Kind of reminds you of the 60 volt Wesco battery, right? This one is 80 volt, uh, six amp hour. So that's a big battery. Six amp hour is a big battery, uh, and 80 volts. So it's a lot of power. It's 20 volts more than the Wesco 22 inch. The Wesco 22 inch is $700. Okay, that's the retail price. This 26 inch with 80 volts instead of 60 volts, this is only $50 more. It's self-propelled, as is the Wesco. All right, so we're gonna tear into this here, and I already got the battery charged up. The battery does come with an indicator where if you push the button and it lights up, it'll show you what you got for a charge in 25% increments. So this should say fully charged. Yeah, it says fully charged. So we'll put this down. We're gonna go ahead and cut this box open. Something about these boxes that you need to be aware of when they send you this box all right put it in your shed store it in the corner of your garage don't get rid of it cut it down break it down if you have to lay it flat underneath your bed or wherever but don't get rid of it because as it says up here do not discard this box because if you have a warranty issue you contact them you put it put it back in this box and the great thing is it's battery so you don't have to worry about fuel and oil and stuff to drain just put it back in the box collapse the handle down and the, affix the label to it they'll come pick it up ups or fedex they'll come pick it up order a pickup and they will take it for repairs all right so that's super important you save your box otherwise you're on your own all right um so again this is the power smart ps76826 srb at the time of filming this mower is not yet available um when i post this video it should be readily available. So, um, like I said, $750. And check the video description for the PowerSmart website, and you can get all the more information you want. It weighs about 80 pounds. It's like 70-something pounds. Um, yeah, let's just tear into this thing. Something that I think you're really going to like about this, no tools required. There's not one tool required to assemble this so, mower. In the box... A nice big bag, all right? This is like 1.7, uh, 1.6, 1.75 bushel bags. Pretty big, pretty big bag. Um, you got the little hangers right here, of course. You know, you know how to use a bag. It is a three-in-one, so you can mulch, you can side shoot, or you can bag. Now, something that's really nice about PowerSmart that people don't realize, and I'm bringing it to your attention, is with these model, these brand motors or mowers, this brand mower, I should say, you can actually do four in one. So you can bag or you can mulch or you can side shoot or you can bag and side shoot at the same time. And the great thing about that is if you got wet grass or tall grass or something like that, you, you don't want it all necessarily going out to side shoot because it's gonna be too much and you're chasing clippings. So you can have the bag on, so some of the clippings go in the bag and some of the clippings go out the side. At the same time, 
you might not want to fill the bag up so much. You might have wet grass or tall weeds or something and you find that you're, you're just, you're wasting your time having to change the bag or empty the bag too much. Well, you can add your side chute while you're bagging and some will go in the bag and some will go out the side chute. And then you can keep mowing in a square and keep shooting it in. So you'll be mulching some while you're bagging some and that's gonna help you tremendously with getting your yard accomplished. Especially if it's a little wet, early in the morning with dew, weeds are sucking up water, or it's just been tall because you've been too busy. You've been watching too many Dan's vlog videos and you didn't get out there and cut the yard. Now you gotta get out there and cut the yard. So you get your book and then you get two keys. And I'll show you about these keys in a little while. So I am going to go ahead and cut this box open. All right. Look at that. Oh, that's a pretty red though, isn't it? All right. So when your mower arrives, this is what it looks like. Okay. In your box. So get it out of your box. However you see fit. Um, it's 80 pounds. So you might need two people to do that. Okay. No tools required. Let me show you how easy it is to assemble this thing. You flip this up. Okay, they got little, if you kind of see that, feel that, okay. You can adjust this to whatever height you want. We'll just put it here for now until we figure something out. Close it down. Same thing here. And close it down. And that's it. If you find this to be too loose from the factory, there's just a little bolt right here you can just loosen. But that's it for that, okay? And then when it comes to the actual handle, You have little notches here that you just slide this in. And that is it. Your bad to the bone, twin blade, $750, 80 volt, 80 volt, 80 volt. Six amp hour, self-propelled, no gas, no oil, bad to the bone mower with one lever adjustment for height. That's bad to the bone. Is fully assembled and ready to go. Look at that, one-handed 80 pound mower. Cut heights approximately three inches down to one and uh, three eighths inch or something like that. Okay. Let's uh, spin this around a little bit and show you the meat and potatoes. All right, so unlike the Toro Time Master where their blades are actually synced with a belt that's, you know, it's a, it's a cogged belt and pulley system, uh, this is independent. So you don't have to worry about that, all right? So you can go ahead, sharpen your blades, put them back on. You don't have to worry about lining anything up or syncing anything. Just get them back on. It's a standard blade. You got 15 16ths right here, more than likely. Blade comes off, sharpen the blade. They got um, nice wing tips over here, but like they got the spindle and everything just like a commercial mower, right? Look how big this is for the bag, for the clippings to get processed. Remember I said that I didn't like how the Toro Time Master couldn't process clippings? Look how big this opening is to get the clippings out of the deck. And it's only four inches smaller. So it's not a comparison to the Toro Time Master that is, you know, this is a 20 inch. So of course it's gonna be, this is 26 inches. And it's got pretty much the same deck, pretty darn close. Um, so yeah, now you're gonna say, well, how could you have your blades like this and they don't, 
they don't hit, aren't you going to have a mohawk of grass in the middle? No, because if you notice, this spindle's up a little bit, this one's down a little bit. And so what happens is the, this blade actually is cutting a little bit more this way, but by the time you get it here and you get this one here, they don't, they don't touch. This blade overlaps this area by just enough that you don't have that blade of grass, okay? So that's what the underside looks like. There is a washout port and it shoots it right here. That's your washout port, all right? So the tires are, are plastic. They're not rubber. I prefer, they're like a soft plastic. I prefer on these more expensive machines to have like a rubber wheel. I just think it's gonna last longer. But then again, you're on grass. So does it really matter too much? Um, you do have sealed bearings up here. All right, kind of like a skateboard. So it's, it is super smooth and sturdy. So there's no like loose bushings, all right? So. You do have a pretty nice little setup there. I like that. So your side chute right here, right? You got this door here. And like I said, you can do both at one time. So this just, it's got the little hooks on the top. Just goes right underneath the spring and bring it down, all right? And then that holds it on there nice and tight. So that's gonna shoot the grass out. I'm looking forward to testing that. And your one handle height adjustment is right here. So just, if you're going to be on the ground doing this, but just if you could take a little bit of pressure off of the machine, it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, but if not, you can still do it. As you see, I'm holding the wheel because I don't want this thing to roll off the table, but one hand right here and you can do your height adjustment and it's the whole thing completely. Um, I'm sure you guys were able to see this. This, this was how you lock the handle. Okay, if you want to fold the handle down, then you just pop that down and then this is loose. Then you do the other side and you can fold the handle down. If at the end of the day, you want to fold the handle down and collapse it, then you got this and this and you can collapse it. Then you got this and this and you can fold it, have it completely out of your way. You also have this right here. So if you bring it like this and lock it, I'm going to teach you guys something, if I can, hold on, oh, there we go. Just got to find a little groove. If it's too hard to squeeze the red handle together, then that means you got, you got too much pressure going on. We can do it this way, it don't really matter. That means you're not, you're not lined up, you might be crooked, so just find the groove, put it together. All right, so because this is in the way, I just put it like that, but I want to show you why. Centered up enough, there you go. So you got yourself a very small footprint in your garage, in your shed, wherever. So you can see with my huge, broad, muscular shoulders, <clears throat> you can see how small this footprint is. And so you don't have to have this big old mower. You're like, oh, it's too big. But I mean, look for real, right? So that's not too big if you ask me. And then pop it out, pop it out, lift it up. So you got Got to get it away. Okay, hold on. There we go. And like I said, you got many different adjustments here too that you can adjust it. So we'll go about, we'll go about here. That's probably going to be fine. There's actually super hard to see but there's actually three little dots right here one two three 
and then there's a silver little dot on here and that's how you line it up so there's one and then if you lay the handle down then that silver dot right here will go to this second black dot or the third black dot so those are your three height adjustments right there so just line up to one of those height adjustments this is all the way and then I showed you guys earlier you have a notch a notch a notch and a notch you have a little nipple right here slide that in okay so now before we go any further let me turn this thing around and these are your keys okay you get two keys with this model all right so open up here where your battery goes and your key just like their 40 volt motor or mower your key goes right here all right make it click okay the purpose of that key is if you leave your battery in and you walk away, then any kid can just press the buttons and start it. All right, They don't have to be strong enough to pull it or anything like that. All they got to do is push the button. And that's a bad thing. With the key, it stops anybody from being able to just push the buttons up there, get these blades spinning, and get somebody hurt. All right, So take the key out, or take the battery out, or take both out. But don't leave the battery and the key in if you got children. That's bad mojo. The next thing is the actual battery itself. And if you notice, you have your little leads right here. And they're just gonna, you just grab right here under the red, lift it up, and it just slides in this way. And there's a little lock right here. Okay, that's gonna lock. It's gonna lock it in place. So just line it up. There's two springs, so you have to kind of beat the springs, all right? And I'm on a table, so I'm gonna give it a little smack. But there you go. And then when you're done, you lift this up. All right, this red lever, you lift it up. And that releases it at the front here. So let me see if I can show you. And the spring pops it out, okay? There you go. And then the key right here. So like, like I said, battery and key, this mower's hot, it's ready to go. And it has a washout port, which is kind of cool. I like that. Let me put this beast on the ground and I'm gonna show you guys the controls on the handles. Then we're gonna cut some grass. Okay, so the basic controls of this machine is really quite simple. All right, let's start from right to left. This is your um, transmission. This is your go, not go, okay? Self propulsion right here. This right here turns on your headlights. So from your right hand, I know you're looking backwards. This right here turns on your headlights. Not really sure about all that, but they're there. If you want them, they're there. This is your speed control, and we'll mess with that out in the yard. Uh, but this works in, con in conjunction with your self-propulsion. As you see, we can go. And then this right here is your power button. In order to engage the blades, you can't just squeeze this, all right? You have to push here and then squeeze. Then you can let go. But you keep, you keep holding this. Listen. Hear how quickly that that stops so the blades don't keep spinning if something comes up and you're like oh crap and you need to stop them blades from spinning it's pretty instant again it won't fire like this all right you have to hold it and then go self propel And it goes. There's a better view of the controls right here, as I was telling you, your right hand. So this is your self-propulsion right here. This turns on your lights down there. Okay, this is your speed control. All the way left is super slow. All the way right is to, to, to the faster. And this is your power button. So you hold this down. And when you hold this down, you squeeze this. and that fires up the blades. Now watch how fast the blades stop spinning. Like almost instant, and that's a good safety device. Let me show you these lights. So right here you got little headlights, little LED lights that operate off that switch. Eh, I doubt I'll ever use anything like that. So again, this one engages the engine, the, the electric engine there, electric motors. For the blades, you hold this and squeeze. Then you let go. And 
and then you squeeze that one over there and that's your self propulsion. So we'll go ahead and set this camera up real quick and uh, do a little bit of filming. Okay, so the first configuration we're going to go for, we're going to do some side discharge, all right, because then I want to come back and do some bagging and see how that works. So once again, you push down the little button. I know I'm kind of far away from the camera, but we push down the little button, we squeeze the motor. And then we hit this and it's cruise control. This is as slow as it'll mow. I'll show you fast in a, in a minute. That's doing a pretty good job. When I come back, we'll go fast. All right, we'll speed it up all the way, full speed. Yeah, full speed's pretty quick. Wow. I know if this thing can um, take care of some leads, I guess it can. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put the bag on. So oh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bag on like any other typical mower. Oh, it's got a butt plug too. So you gotta take the butt plug out if you're gonna use the bag. Okay, then we'll take the side chute off. Get that out of the way. And let's see what we got. You know what's really nice about this thing? Is like, this is like a Toro Time Master, but it's, it's pretty, look how manageable it is because I don't have a big honking motor up there. All right, let's see if it'll bag. Sounds like it's bagging. <laughs> it bags. Yeah, man, this thing bags. Wow. Wow. It bags. Now let's see if it mulches. Now I don't have the mulch plate in, so it's probably gonna kick out. Don't hold that against the mower to hold that against me for being lazy. Yeah, it is kicking out some. I'm gonna get the mulch plate, hold on. So you wanna put the butt plug back in as you can see. 
if you're going to mulch. Some machines it doesn't really matter, some machines it does. Let's see what happens with that big pile of leaves. And we are all the way slow. Ooh, hear that? It went to like super turbo mode. Let's hit it again. It's not all gone, but almost. I mean, it's doing a pretty darn good job of mulching. I mean, that, it's gone. It is gone. I mean, it's gone, guys. It did a really, 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 really good job of mulching. That's very impressive. Okay, so something that we do need to talk about that I'm not a big fan of, but you have to learn how to overcome it, and you might have seen me do it, and now I'm gonna demonstrate it again. Now you know what to look for. When you push this button down and you push this button down, the blades turn on. You can let go with this button and hold this. Now, if you hit this button while you're holding this, it's cruise control and you think that's a good thing. The problem is when you get to where you need to turn around, it's still moving and you want to let go of that, that button like you would a normal self-propelled mower and, you, and it keeps going because you got the blade spinning. The only way to get the self propulsion to stop if you have the blade spinning is let go of the button for the blades. Then the self propulsion stops. Now, if you just take off, it'll stop. See, it'll stop. So if you squeeze this and you just want to crawl down the yard somewhere, you can do that without the blades. But as soon as you engage the blades and you, and, and you squeeze your self-propulsion, then it locks the self-propulsion at a constant. So what you gotta do, thank God it's a light mower and it's not as heavy as a Time Master, is you just swivel around on them back feet. You just keep it pressed, keep the blade spinning, keep the wheels spinning and swivel it around. Don't pick up the front wheels and try to go around, just use the handle and swivel it around make your turn while the blades are still spinning. Otherwise, you're gonna keep disconnecting your hand here from this switch, whatever, God, the bugs. And the blades are gonna keep stopping, and every time you start your blades again, you drain the battery more than if they're just spinning. That initial start's gonna drain that battery down. So watch when I mow and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and bag this um, and get these leaves all picked up and uh, let's see what we can do. Watch like, watch like what I was saying when I get down to the end, you'll see me swiveling to keep the back wheel spinning and the blade spinning because I'm not a type of person who's gonna kill these, these blades every time I need to stop this thing from moving to turn. So I'm just gonna swing it and we'll see how that works out.
And as you can see, for demonstration purposes, I'm doing it with one hand. So, now going back this way. I mean, it's quite an impressive machine. And it's just humming along. And there is no rhyme or reason as to the pattern that I'm doing right now. I'm just doing it. I'm just trying to stay in camera. And I'm doing it one-handed just to demonstrate that if I can do it with my noodle arms one-handed, then you certainly can do it with your noodle arms one-handed. I just watched that man flip that man the finger. What the hell? <laughs> and our bag is full. So we vacuumed up quite a bit. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there's still some leaves here, but we vacuumed up quite a bit. That's a full bag. So it's definitely doing a good job of cutting the grass and vacuuming, vacuuming up leaves. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna go back over and mulch it. Just this section right here. Let's see how far this battery goes. I'm really curious as to how long the blade, the uh, battery is going to last. We've already done one section up there. Now we did about half the front yard. So we're going to do this half again, and that's about the whole yard. Oh, I let go of the switch, my bad. I can't get over like how wide the deck is. I'm almost done already. It's just pulverizing the leaves. Now I understand the plastic wheels really do come in handy because it allows it to slide. So you can just flip it, just swing it around like I'm saying, so you don't have to let go of this handle. You don't have to stop the cruise control. I'm not a fan of the cruise control. I think you should touch it and it should turn it off. That is something I would definitely tell the engineers that I want changed. I should be able to go like this and turn the cruise control off for safety reasons. Sometimes people panic.
Okay, sounds like the batteries still have plenty of juice. We did half the yard twice. We bagged it the first time. We mulched it this time. Um, we mowed a, a, a little bit up there where the camera is that we already did. Now what I'm gonna do is adjust the camera over a little bit and I'm going to mow this area now in just mulch it mode, okay? We're just gonna mulch it right here in this area and we'll see what we can do. So like I said, you gotta kinda, you gotta get funky with the back wheels. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Oops, I let go. That's gonna take some time to get used to it. And I'm just squaring it off for no rhyme or reason. You can go back and forth. If you want to try to do stripes or something like that, that's fine. I don't think this mower is going to stripe very well, but you won't really know that for uh, quite some time until the real grass starts to come in. Right now, we're just cutting out winter grass. Really, the biggest thing about today is like what's it doing with the leaves and how long does the battery last? And how well is this 26 inch deck? And right now, I like it. With all these leaves, it would be better to bag or side discharge and, and kind of corral the leaves, but it's okay. This is actually my first cut of the year on this yard. We've already bagged it. It already did a fantastic job. We already side shoot. It did a fantastic job. We mulched up the clippings from the bag it did a fantastic job. Really now I just want to see if the battery will get me through the whole front yard. At a minimum. I'm willing to bet the battery will get me through my whole yard. But I'm not about to mow my whole yard today. I have to take my kid to the store. Now something about a lithium battery, you don't get much warning. When it decides it's out of juice, lithium batteries just turn off. You might get a little drop in power and very quickly it's just going to turn off on you. It'll be over. So you see, I'm just doing it all one-handed. Only because it's just easier. I could, I guess, do it with two, but... I don't really need to. It's like driving a car when you have two hands on a steering wheel, you don't know what to do with. You're all over the place, but when you cruise with one hand, you're, you got better control. It's like the same thing. Oh, well, we're almost done. My bad. Well, 
What a fantastic job. Oops, I did it again. I would definitely, I would definitely talk to the uh, engineers about that because I don't like that. I don't like that I have to swivel it around. I mean, I can, and you see me doing it, but I think it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, see what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to have to do that. I want to just have it stop moving. So there's, there's two faults in the drive, drive train that I do not like about this machine. One, the cruise control does not disengage. And for two, when you do disengage it, look how far it still goes. And so when you come up to a house or something, you better know, like we'll use the shade, for example, hopefully that shows. You better know that by the time you get to that shade, which might be a house or a wood fence or something, boom, I just hit it. You better know that it can stop in time. So hold this and go again. And now I'm gonna do it like for real. We're mowing along, fat, happy, and dumb. And then I let go and I'm still holding it and I, I'm fighting it and it, it hit the fence or it hit the house or whatever. So that's two things about this machine in particular I do not like. The cruise control, I think you should be able to disengage it. And the blade, um, if you let go of this, it should not keep the, the drive line engaged for two more steps. I'll show you again. Here we go. One, two, let go. Two steps. That's two things, Power Smart, I think your engineer should work on, but it's not a game changer, okay? I'm not gonna sit here and I'm not, I'll never be the guy that sits here and tells you that this thing's the best thing since sliced bread and women, because um, it's not. You can never, ever, ever, ever replace a good slice of bread. So it's not the best thing since sliced bread. It's an awesome machine for $750. We just did my whole front yard. We did that area twice and we still have juice to go. It's 26 inches. It bags like a mofo. It side discharges like a faux mo. It mulches pretty darn good. And I mean, the 26 inch, I can't get over to 26 inches. So, so far, this thing is a rock star. But again, I'm not going to lie to you. There are some driveline issues that I want you to be aware of when you purchase it. Okay? So, I think PowerSmart would do good to get with me, talk to me about some of these engineering feats that I think should be discussed. Other than that, um, I mean, other than that, would I buy this for $750 and use it at my house in a New York second? If I was wanting a bigger cut mower than a regular 20 inch or 22 inch gas mower, um, before I would go and get a Time Master for $1,300 or whatever they charge and not be able to move it around alone, this is $750. So, I mean, you keep like 500 bucks in your pocket and it's light enough that you can get to it on your own. No, no crazy stuff, no gas, no oil. It's easy to work on. Um, you can stand it up and take the blades off with a quick impact wrench, sharpen them, put it back on. I showed you how to stand it up earlier. One lever, adjust it all, one hand. Even an old lady can use it. Um, Allen, lawn care nut, no problem there. Handle collapses down instantly, no problem there. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know what, what more you guys wanna know. Would I buy it for $750? Yes, in a New York second. I would have, I would have no fear buying this. Um, am I gonna sell this in a New York second? I don't need it, uh, I will sell it. But it's not because I don't like it. And I bet before I sell it, you guys will see this probably in more videos. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll see you guys on the next one.